Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the Asian Pacific Mathematical Olympia 2014. It says, find all natural numbers n such that for all integers k, there exists an integer k for which n divides a cubed plus a minus k. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This problem is um, um looks very simple from from the wordings, but um from my experience, it requires a lot of um a great deal of uh, translation in terms of mathematical terminologies. So the first thing that I have to do is to analyze the problem. It says find all uh natural numbers n so as a divisor part, and then and so a cubed plus a minus k would be um divisible by n. So I'm going to first translate this to a cubed plus a is congruent to k mod n. Okay, and now because this part, this k, is arbitrary, so I can further translate this statement to a cubed plus a, as in I span over a um, to be um, integers, okay, this set, I can replace it by say I can in other words say it by um it's a complete residue system. As in this set, when I take mod n, it just takes all the possible values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to all the way up to n minus 1. Okay, and so we have this. Now Another way to um, interpret this uh, so-called complete residue system is that if a cubed plus a is congruent to b cubed plus b mod n, then a is simply congruent to b mod n. So, because we know that if, uh, if I take a, say, equals 1, say a equals 1, and a equals n plus 1, they would uh, obviously give the same value mod n. So we could even restrict this to um, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to a minus 1. And just take and just consider those n values. And if we say that it's a complete residue system mod n, then these n entries should be, um, should be distinct. Okay, they should not overlap when uh, when we uh, do mod n. So I can claim this statement is that if two of them are congruent mod n, then actually the original term, uh, the so-called pre-image, okay, a and b should be congruent mod n as well. Now, this is something more interesting because I at least have some equation to consider, okay, this is, an, this is a kind of a more proper equation to consider. So I'm going to take a look at this. And apart from um, considering this equation, there's actually another, another fact that I have to consider is that if this doesn't work for some n equals to m that is um, natural numbers, okay, then it will not work. for all multiples of n, sorry, multiples of m, say 2m, 3m, and so on. Um, well, this is pretty obvious, right? Because um, if I can't even obtain a complete residue system mod some uh, small number, say, say m, then uh, say uh, 2, then um, how could how could we ever get a complete residue system when we consider even um, like bigger numbers, which actually um, contains uh, mod 2 as a subset? So um, this is true, and so um, this motivates me to cons only consider the cases when n is prime. So by doing this, I can restrict my um, possibilities, the numbers that I have to consider, into only product of powers of some certain primes. So this motivates me to consider primes, okay, when n is a prime. I should not say primes, but is a prime. Okay, 
So I'm going to take a look at that equation when n is a prime. So I'm just going to formulate all of these first. Um, so it is equivalent to say, now it comes to the main solution. It is equivalent to say that okay, just as in um uh mod n is um complete residual system mod n, which means. This thing, okay, which is um, exactly what I've written above. And the next part is that is to again copy this statement again. If um, this doesn't hold for some natural number m, then it won't hold for any uh, lambda m where lambda is some natural number okay so kind of more mathematical the writing so it suffices to consider when n equals 1 or when n equals p where p prime okay we have to also consider some some cases when uh, n is not even uh, not even the product of a prime, primes. Okay. Well, of course this works. So, and however, zero cube plus zero is congruent to one cube plus one mod two. So n equals 2 fails. Now it remains to consider the case when n is an odd prime or I should say when p is odd okay for simplicity. Now here comes the main dish So a cube plus a is congruent to b cube plus b mod p. Um, we've come this far to uh, simply establish this equation. Now I'm going to move everything to left hand side and factorize, and it will become a minus b times a square plus a b plus b square plus one congruent to zero mod p. Okay, then of course we have a possibility to to have a congruent to b mod p, or otherwise a square plus a b plus b square plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so if we want to force if we want to force a to be congruent to b mod p, then the idea is we want this to have no solution. Now to further elaborate on this part, I will first complete the squares. So because uh, p is odd prime, so I can simply multiply both sides by 4. So 4a squared plus 4ab plus 4b squared plus 4 is congruent to 0 mod p. And then I have 2a plus b whole squared plus uh, 3b squared plus 4 congruent to 0 mod p. And now we have this minus 3b, oh, sorry, it should be plus 4 here, minus 3b squared mod p. So on one side I have uh, some square plus 4 and on the other side I have minus 3b squared mod p. Um, at this stage, the right hand side is easier to consider is that Remember, we have to uh, force this part to have no solution. But the question is, is this even possible? 
is that note that for minus three b squared, we have uh, it's just um, equivalent to uh, multiplying all the quadratic residues mod p by minus three. Okay, so um, unless p is three, then it is or else it's just um, a certain reshuffle of the terms. Then there should be from our um, usual sense of um, uh, quadratic residues, then there should be p plus 1 over 2 possible values on the right hand side. And similarly, there should be p plus 1 over 2 possible values on the left hand side. But when we are only considering mod p, so actually we only have these values 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to p minus 1. So p values all together. But now left hand side has p plus 1 over 2, say um, somewhere here, okay, at the first half. And then the, uh, the other possible values on left hand side is uh, somewhere here. Okay, we could actually say that by pigeonhole principle, there must be some parts that they overlap. Okay, it's impossible for them to be uh, completely uh, disjoint. So, by pigeonhole, um, possible values must overlap. And there must be a solution. Mod P. Okay, so there's a contradiction. Now, all of all these works show that if P is not free, then we we've actually met the target. Is that uh, well, if P is not free, then there actually is a solution. Okay, so this cannot help. Uh, so this would hold. So this would fail. Okay, because a squared plus a b plus b squared plus one has already taken. Um, uh, that uh, factor of p, and we need not have a to be congruent to b mod p, and so we would we would not have a complete residue system, and so the statement in the problem would fail. Okay, it takes a great deal of translation. So we've actually restricted all the possible values to only um, powers of three. Where m is a non-negative integer. Okay, of course we have to consider non-negative integers, not just uh, positive, because uh, when m is zero, it will also work. So now, when n is a power of three, again we return to this equation. This congruence equation, but a squared plus a b plus b squared plus one. But for this equation that is congruent to zero mod three to the m, then again we have this. But this time, we have this. 2a plus b whole square plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 3m. And this cannot be true because this can't even hold when we are, con we are only doing mod 3. Okay, so this will surely fail. Okay, so we must have a... congruent to a b mod 3m because 2a plus b whole square plus 1 can't even take any single factor 
or free. So all the um, that responsibility must be um, taken up by um, a minus b only. So a minus b must be congruent to zero mod three to the power m. The whole, the whole power. So therefore, the only solutions are. n equals 3 to the m where m is a non-negative integer okay and of course that includes 1 so yay we are done i hope you enjoyed the video feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments if you like my videos make sure to subscribe to my channel right now thank you for your support see you next time